It was a shiny red plastic ball sat incongruously on the slippery green slimed floor. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. It was a soggy, crumpled paper tissue. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. It was a small scrap of cloth caught on the rusting spike. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. It was the scrap of material I'd found in the sewer. It was the soggy tissue I'd found in the sewers. The nose was hollow. Printed on the inside were the words, La Risée du Monde, Paris. It was a bright red plastic nose, part of a clown's costume. Hi there. Hold it right there, you, you sewer rat. I knew you'd come back, and now I've got you. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there, immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Ha! You won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? I was looking for a clown. Ha! Huh. Ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon dieu! That is awful! And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah! Mon dieu! Then, the man I chased, do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. Ha <laughs> ha, most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type. <laughs> Just like you. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, uh, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, thank heavens. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. <laughs> That's what you say. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Bravo! Ah, you need some sensible boots. You won't get far in those stupid sneakers. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave, or do I have to call the police? Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm-hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rosso? What does that say? Hominoid Division? A uh, homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your, your poise. Oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. 
When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector? Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, Monsieur. He grabbed me in an arm lock. His face suddenly next to mine. His grip was like iron. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh no. He made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? You, you, you can't suspect her, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, uh, I know her quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Really? So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, mais oui! Who else would I find to cut my toenails? Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why, yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? I don't know. But the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Now, about the jacket you found, do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> a pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. What was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74980859. You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that's it. A little trick with numbers that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. It's uh, mm, disgusting. What on earth possessed you to show it to me? Someone has emptied their nostrils into it. Take a look at this false nose. Aha! Uh -huh. That looks like a clown's nose to me. Precisely. He must have dropped it in his panic. Unless he wanted you to find it. Why would he want to do that? To put you off the scent. This is what I used to open the manhole cover. I have one just the same as that, monsieur. I will fetch it if you like. No, don't bother. Oh, <laughs> it is no bother, monsieur. Nah, forget it. Just trying to be helpful, monsieur. I have to be going. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Vraiment? I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. So the clown had escaped into the sewer, come up into the courtyard, and then slipped back into the street here. Now, it wasn't much, but it was more than the cops had got.
Hello, Nico Kula. Hello, it's George. Ah, oh, oui. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment later this afternoon? Uh, fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come over. I was used to working alone, but I had to admit it felt good with George on the case too. But there were some things I was going to have to do alone, and fast. I needed the answers to some questions. Who was the costume killer? And why did he murder Carchon? Why did Carchon ask for me to interview him? How did he know my father? And why was my editor so scared? There was some kind of secret war going on out there, but who was on which side? One thing I did know. I wasn't going to get the answer sitting at my desk. My old table had seen better days. I was beginning to know how it felt. It was a photograph of my father, the first one I ever took, with the first camera he ever bought me. No messages for me. You have no messages. No, I'm not giving The box was one of the few things my father left me. The elephant on the lid was a perfect match to Cochon's. The box was carved by my father. It never had a key. The box was one of the few things my father left me. The elephant on the lid was a perfect match to Cochon's. The box was one of the few things the elephant It was the beautiful elephant my father had carved. My first teddy. Never had a boyfriend as loyal as him. It was my neighbor, the so-called psychic. Mamsel Collard. Oh, hello there. Don't tell me. I'm going to meet a tall, dark man. No, I don't think so. Why would you say that? Oh, just a wild guess. Anyway, your cousin's female and very pretty. What? Your cousin from Marseille. How could you forget her so soon? She was only in your apartment yesterday. Ah, oh, really? Such a charming young girl. Isn't she? And in my apartment, you say? She let herself in, of course. She's got a key. Suddenly, everything made sense. My apartment had been bugged. That was how Plantard knew all about my article. How did I know? Because the only cousin I have is a sweet little guy called Jean-Marc, who runs a patisserie in Le Touquet. These people were determined, which meant they were also very dangerous. I suppose she'd forgotten which apartment was mine. Oh, Miss Collard, you're a mind reader. That's just what she said. Oh, I bet it was. 
Well, I'd better be going. See what my sweet cousin's been getting up to. Au revoir, mademoiselle. The door was locked. The workman looked about as eager and helpful as your average rod digger. Hello, could I ask you some questions? That depends. Are you a cop? No, I'm a journalist. Bit late, aren't you? They already took away the body. I'm doing a follow-up on this story. Tell me, are you related to the workman I saw digging the hole? Don't talk to me about flobage. Pa! Okay. He just won a fortune on the horses and he won't give me a cent. Well, it's his money. When he was broke, he was happy to touch me for a loan. Brothers should look after each other, he used to say. He's changed his tune now, he's brassed up. Have the police finished with the crime scene? What does it look like? I got orders to board up the windows, and that's what I'm doing. You're doing a fine job. Damn right I am. You should be writing about me, not that idiot that got blown up. The heroes will pick up the pieces when disaster strikes. Exactly. Well, give me your best smile, and maybe I'll put your picture in the article. Oh. Right. Uh, just give me a minute to do my hair. The police had removed the body, but nothing else looked disturbed. Some journalists drink on the job, not me. A panel had been blown away, revealing a gap. From this angle, I could see that something had been lodged in the gap behind the pipes. Behind the table were some damaged pipes. Now I'd seen it in the mirror, I could make out something behind the pipes. Voila! The police and forensic teams had missed a vital piece of evidence. Some kind of pouch. On the pouch was the cross symbol of Cochon's organization. I was on the right track. On the pouch, inside the pouch, were two items. A strange metallic artifact and a letter in some kind of code. The artifact had a sword laid across scales. There was a picture of Lady Justice on the lock panel in the room below the conciergerie. Another coded message using the same cipher system. So, Plantard was involved with Cochon. Plantard. Pierre Kim. Murderer must have followed trail from Arno and Yamada. 
He will come for us now. We must be vigilant. Thierry's girl broke into Pierre's safe. She worries me. Imelda. So much for Imelda's innocence. Plantard was working for her. And for Conchon. But why did Plantard want to meet? Was it a trap? Or maybe he was in too deep and needed me to tell the story. Whatever the story was. One thing was clear. It was a story worth killing for. Hey, what about my photos? Oh, of course. How could I forget? Well, I'm waiting. Get your camera out. Camera? Oh, I forgot. It broke. Hello. They should never send a woman to do a man's job. Well, this woman had fooled him easily enough. And found the evidence the police had missed. The strange metal artifact I found in Plantard's pouch had pointed back to the quayside. Plantard's key fitted the lock, so he must have used this place too. The folders were empty. Someone had removed anything that they thought could be incriminating. A photograph had been torn up. If I could just arrange the pieces, Oh my god, it can't be. There was no doubt about it. It was a picture of my father. Papa? Oh god. After what I'd gone through, I thought I could face anything, but not this. My father, the one person in the whole world who I truly admired, standing with Cachon while those murderers carried on with their evil work. My father, grinning at the camera. I couldn't believe it. I realized that I desperately needed to get to the bottom of this story, and that I really needed George. The door was shabby and in need of a coat of paint. I couldn't imagine the Collard woman living here.
I pushed against the door, but it seemed to be locked. The woman was doing something with a pair of needles that couldn't be described as knitting. Oh, hi. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good. It only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My oh my, what a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? How does this fortune telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people, I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, nothing. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me in the apartment block across the street. I tried the door, but it's locked. You know, I've told the landlord about that a million times. It is a damp. The old building is like a sponge. It sucks up the moisture from God knows where. You mean the door is stuck because it's swollen? That is correct. There is an art to opening it. Don't shove too hard. Just give it a gentle nudge above the log. Thanks for the advice. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows insufficient heating. It's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. Have you seen anyone out here watching Mademoiselle Collard's apartment? Yes, I have. A strange man. Tall? And thin as a broomstick. He kept his face hidden. But I saw his eyes peering from evil little slits. How was he dressed? A long brown raincoat with an hat. Or like Humphrey Bogart? Yes, but he didn't have Bogart's charisma. Besides, this guy looked like he needed a toilet. You never saw Bogart clenching his buttocks like that. Is there anything else you can tell me about Mademoiselle Collard? No, monsieur. What can you tell me about this material? It's a very expensive piece of cloth, monsieur. What can you tell me about this tissue? Nothing. Do you recognize this nose? No, monsieur. What do you make of this tool? Is it something a dentist would use? No. It's for raising manhole covers. Formidable. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently just above the lock. 